let's move to a more difficult problem in double summation which are the connected sigma problems. Let's see an example. What is the value of double summation CRCS where R is more than equal to 0 less than S less than equal to N? Now as you can see because of this connection between R and S they are not independent and such problems are called the connected sigma problems. Let us take a moment to reflect what this expression really means. Since r is more than equal to 0, hence r minimum equals 0. And since s is less than equal to n, hence s max is n. Now since r is less than s, it would mean r max is n minus 1. And since s is always more than r, hence s minimum would be equal to 1. Therefore, r is more than equal to 0 less than equal to n minus 1 and s is more than equal to 1 less than equal to n. Now that we are clear on the lower and upper bounds of the values of r and s, let's take a look at what values r and s can take. For s equals 1, r can take only value 0 as r is less than s. Similarly, for s equals 2, r can take values 0 and 1. For s equals 3, r can be 0, 1, 2. For s equals 4, r can be 0, 1, 2 or 3. Similarly going on, for s equals n, r can take values 0, 1, 2, 3 until n minus 1. Now that we have listed down all these R and S pairs possible, we can find out all the terms that are present in this double summation CRCS. For R equals 0, S equals 1, I would have C naught C1. For R equals 0, S equals 2, I would have C naught C2. And for R equals 1, S equals 2, I would have C1 C2. Similarly, for S equals 3, I would have C naught C3 c1 c3 c2 c3 for s equals 4 i would have c0 c4 c1 c4 c2 c4 c3 c4 and so on for s equals n i would have c0 cn c1 cn c2 cn until cn cn minus 1 now i can rearrange these terms reversing their order to get c0 c1 c1 c2 plus c0 c2 C2, C3 plus C1, C3 plus C0, C3. C3, C4, C2, C4, C1, C4, C0, C4. Cn minus 1, Cn. And so on until Cn minus 1, Cn. Cn minus 2, Cn. Cn minus 3, Cn. And so on until C0, Cn. Now that we have written the terms in this order, we will try and find out the sums of terms lying along the same vertical line. For example, we would try and find out the sum of this section, of this section, of this section and so on. And it turns out finding out the sum of the terms in this fashion is quite easy. And if you recall, we have done this already. Let's try and find out the sum of the red section first. For that, we need to write out the expansion of 1 plus x to the power n and the expansion of x plus 1 to the power n, just like old times. Now to get c0 c1, I would need to combine these two terms, that is the power of xn minus 1. To get c1 c2, I would need to combine these two terms, that is again the power of xn minus 1. And for c2 c3, again I would get the power of x to the power n minus 1. So if I were to multiply these two series and take the appropriate coefficient of x to the power n minus 1 on the left hand side and the right hand side, I would find out that this sum would be equal to 2nc n minus 1. Similarly, let's try to find out the sum of the pink section. For the pink section, I would have c0 c2 that is the power of xn minus 2, c1, c3, that would again be the power of x to the power n minus 2, and so on. So this summation would be equal to 
2n c n minus 2. Similarly, this summation would be equal to 2n c n minus 3 and so on until I get this summation to be equal to 2n c 0. Hence, my sum becomes 2n c n minus 1 plus 2n c n minus 2 plus 2n c n minus 3 until 2n c naught. Now, finding this sum out is quite easy and let us see how we can do it. Now, we can write the expansion of 1 plus x to the power 2n as 2n c naught plus 2n c 1 x so on 2n c n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 2n c n x to the power n plus 2n c n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1 and so on until 2n c 2n x to the power 0. Now let's put x equals 1 on both the sides. We get 2 to the power 2n equals 2n c naught plus 2n c 1 so on 2n c n minus 1 plus 2n c n plus 2n c n plus 1 and so on until 2n c 2n. Now we know that n c r equals n c n minus r. Using this formula, it is clear that this sum and this sum should be equal. And we can also see that this sum is same as this sum. So if I were to call this as s, I get 2 to power 2n equals s plus 2n cn plus s. Thus solving for s, I get 2 to the power 2n minus 2n cn divided by 2. This is my required summation of the connected sigma mentioned here. As you all have seen, this is quite a tedious way of solving this question. It turns out that there is in fact a better way of solving this and we will look through it in the next section.